Welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This one's going out to our old buddy Jack D. That Star Wars live action special will now forever haunt my memories till the day I die, he says. Sorry about that. This rundown is dedicated to you. It looks like Suicide Squad is a big hit, or is it? The villainous new DC movie opened in theaters on Friday, and despite the fact that it was universally panned by critics, including me, it earned an impressive 135 million bucks over the weekend. That's enough money to make it the biggest August opening in history, beating the previous record holder, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, but DC fans might not want to start celebrating just yet. My count's looking a little thin. If you look more closely at the numbers, Suicide Squad saw a massive 41% drop in ticket sales from Friday to Saturday. For comparison, Guardians of the Galaxy saw only an 18% decline during its first two days, and 41% is virtually unheard of. In fact, a drop-off like this is so rare that the only other time it's happened this year was with DC's last big movie, Batman vs. Superman, which saw a 37% decline. That film, despite its huge opening day, failed to meet box office expectations in the long run, and the early numbers for Suicide Squad seem to indicate that it's on the same track. No money, no honey. So why did the movie get such a huge drop? It could be the fact that everyone was anxious to see it on opening night, although given how steep the decline was, it's more likely the result of negative word of mouth. When a movie is bad, people often tell their friends not to see it, and this is even more pronounced in the age of social media. To make a long story short, Suicide Squad is making a lot of money, but it would probably make a lot more money if it was actually good. Unless you're doing business with your auntie. Watch my review of the film if you want to know more about what's wrong with it. And just to be clear, we're huge DC fans around here, so we've got our fingers crossed that they'll learn from their mistakes and get their crap together in time for upcoming projects like Wonder Woman and Justice League. Those arrive next year. And when it comes to making money, Pokemon Go is out to catch it all. The hit augmented reality game began rolling out just over a month ago, and it's broken another record. According to the mobile analytics firm Sensor Tower, Pokemon Go earned 200 million bucks in global net revenue in its first 30 days, giving it the most successful first month in mobile gaming history. The previous record holder, Clash Royale, made 125 million bucks in its first 30 days when it launched earlier this year. Given that Pokemon Go is free to download, all of its revenue is of course earned through in-game microtransactions. Developer Niantic Labs recently revealed that they hope to introduce more in-game sponsorships, which will mean less of an emphasis on microtransactions moving forward. <laughs> PC gamers won't have to wait much longer to start exploring the galaxy in No Man's Sky. Developer Hello Games has announced that the PC version of the new space adventure will be released this Friday, August 12th, just a few days after the release of the console version, which lands on the PS4 tomorrow. This is the first official confirmation of the game's PC launch date, and the developers say they need the extra few days to make sure it will be the best version it can be. Like most of you, we can't wait to jump into No Man's Sky, so watch for our review right here on our channels in the coming days. As for other platforms, Hello Games has hinted that the game could be released on the Xbox One at some point in the future, although no official announcements have been made. We'll let you know if that changes. Agent 47 isn't going to stop the killing anytime soon. With the episodic new Hitman game currently in the middle of its global rollout, developer IO Interactive is already planning future Hitman titles. Writing to fans on Twitter, they reveal that they look at the new game and its seven episodes as just the first season of an ongoing series, and they hope to follow it up with at least two more seasons. This is similar to what other developers are already doing with their own episodic games, and given the success of the episodic model, we could be seeing more and more AAA franchises do the same thing in the future. Before we get ahead of ourselves, IO Interactive points out that they've yet to be given an official green light for more seasons of Hitman. Publisher Square Enix is likely waiting to gauge the success of the current season before moving ahead with more. The fourth episode will hit consoles and the PC next week. Rocket League is getting ready to rumble with some cool new content. During the Rocket League Championship Series, developer Psyonix announced Rumble, an all-new free mode for the car soccer game. It promises to make everything even more over the top by giving players the ability to use 11 crazy new power-ups. They include a grappling hook to tug on your balls, spikes to poke them, a giant boot to kick them, and a freezer, which turns them blue. Sounds like a fun Friday night. All of the power-ups can be randomized, so you'll never know which ones you'll get, and you'll also be able to customize them before you start your playlist. Rocket League Rumble will be available next month. 
Game of Thrones creator George R. R. Martin is continuing his quest to conquer television with a massive new project. Martin's popular science fiction slash superhero book series called Wild Cards is heading to television. The rights to the books have been picked up by Universal Cable Productions and they plan to turn them into not one, but several different interconnecting TV shows that will take place in the same world and revolve around the same characters. This makes sense given the scale of the books. Wild Cards is an anthology series created by Martin, but with several other authors contributing stories set within the same universe. They take place in an alternate history version of the U.S. where a strange alien virus has given a handful of people superhero-like powers. Martin says that they haven't decided what stories will be featured in the TV adaptations, but he adds that the first series has already begun development, so expect more details soon. The show is being produced by Martin's frequent collaborator, Melinda Snodgrass, who wrote and edited many of the Wild Cards books. She also has a history in television, serving as a script supervisor on Star Trek The Next Generation and writing that show's best episode, Measure of a Man. Good try. Nine out of ten for effort. Back in the Seven Kingdoms, Martin is currently working on the next Game of Thrones book, The Winds of Winter, coming early next year. HBO has confirmed that the show will end with season eight, which is slated to air in 2018. And Master Chief is still planning to invade the airwaves with a TV show of his own. The long-awaited live-action Halo TV series is still in the works. That's according to Xbox head Phil Spencer, who tells fans on Twitter that, despite rumors, the project hasn't been canceled and is still very much alive. He didn't say how far along it is or when we might get to see it, but this should come as a relief to fans. The TV show was first announced back in 2013 with none other than Steven Spielberg on board as a producer, and if it ever gets released, it will be the first Halo adaptation made for television. There have been two online-only adaptations, 2012's Forward Unto Dawn and 2014's Nightfall, the latter of the two being produced by legendary filmmaker Ridley Scott. Expect the Spielberg-produced show to be even bigger if it really does ever see the light of day. Understood, Commander. And that wraps us up for the rundown, everybody. We'll be back again tomorrow with a brand new one. Affirmative. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.